I'm having a fantabulous hair day. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy. Freaking out? Your freak out tag which is very popular about this time every year really uh, I've done it for the last couple of years I'm sure you've seen all of the booktubers put this video out in like the last few weeks and so it's my turn to do it as well I will leave all the questions and the last two years that I've done this down below if you were curious about those please play along in the comments with me um, I'll also leave the original channel down below this tag was created by Chami and this video like her video is no longer up but her channel is still live so go check her out she's quite a lot of fun I love watching her videos uh, but without further ado this is pretty self-explanatory check in see how I'm doing let's get started. So the first one is the best book you've read so far this year and I've had quite a lot of really good ones here lately so this was a little difficult to pick but after thinking about it I said there's no other answer except for Crescent City aka House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. I read this earlier this year. I'm obsessed utterly obsessed with this woman. Um, I've recently read her Akatar series, at least the first half of it, and really enjoyed that. But this was the first step into Sarah J Mass that I ever had, and I loved my time. I'm so excited for the second one that's going to come out, I think, at the beginning of next year. This is just so good, and it's like scary large, it's pretty chunky, but I loved it. I loved it so much. The next one is the best sequel you've read this year. And this is another Mass book, and that is Akamath, a Court of Mist and Fury. This is the sequel or the second in the Akatar series. I read this last month in June, so you will see my thoughts. Probably the next video you see will be my wrap up. But I honestly, I love this so much. It's a very close tie between this one and the third one in this series as far as what my favorite is. But I think this one wins just because it like develops her character and some of the relationships in this world more, I think, in this one. And I just I loved watching that. So yeah, I really loved the sequel. So the next one are some new releases that have come out this year, but you haven't gotten to. I have a lot of new releases that I haven't gotten to, and I'm so excited about all of them, but I narrowed it down to two. The first one is one that came out in June, and that is Jay's Gay Agenda by Jason June. This is a debut novel for this author, but basically it follows Jay, who is in a very conservative town. He knows that he's gay, but he's never really had love before, and he's just kind of like waiting in the closet. And then his him and his family move to uh, Seattle. They moved to Seattle, which is very, like, open to the LGBTQ plus community. And so he starts kind of taking off these things on his gay agenda, as he has called it. It's kind of like a coming of age story for Jay. I know that he, it says here that he kind of like struggles with past friends and new friends. And I think there's like a struggle between relationships versus hookups. And just kind of like, now that he can actually be out, he's gone like full 180 from what he was before but this cover is stunning and honestly this title is everything and that is what grabbed my attention but it's a cute little contemporary I've heard good things about so I really want to get to that one this summer sometime but another one that I haven't gotten to is one that came out in January I think and that is Lore by Alex Bracken this is her Greek mythology inspired standalone story and I just I haven't gone around to it I don't have an excuse as to why I know I think I'm gonna really really enjoy this. I like things based on Greek mythology and this is a standalone so I don't have to dedicate too much to it. So I'm very excited about this. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So I like to read those. The next one is your most anticipated release for the rest of the year. And I was looking at my like list of releases and most of the ones that I'm really excited about have already come out. However, the third in the extraordinary women's series by Evie Dunmore comes out which is Portrait of a Scotsman and this comes out in September. Obviously I've pre-ordered this as well uh, but I've loved these books by her. This is her kind of debut series. Uh, the first in the series was her debut novel. I've really enjoyed it. It's this group of like four women um, in England, specifically Oxford, and they're just kind of part of the suffragette movement at the time. And so each story is a different 
romance story for our four main characters and this is just the next one. Um, I've honestly forgotten which character this follows but obviously she falls for a Scotsman and I think I know who it is. Like I feel like we found out who it was in the second book um, or like that character's introduced in the second book. I really love Evie Dunmore's writing. Her steamy scenes are incredible and her writing is really funny. I love her banter so I'm very excited for the next one in this series. The next one is the biggest disappointment of the year. This should not be a surprise. Tis Mary B by Catherine J. Chen, An Untold Story of Pride and Prejudice. This is basically kind of like a retelling or let's say reimagining added on to Pride and Prejudice but it follows Mary Bennett which is the middle sister and it just didn't work for me. I've ranted about it a lot so I'll leave the vlog up above or down below or something where I kind of rant about this but it just didn't work for me for many reasons. So I was expecting great things from this and it just fell flat. But this cover is pretty, so we're holding on to it for just the tiniest bit longer. We'll see how long that lasts. The next one is your biggest surprise. And this one might be stretching it a little bit, but I'm going to say Lovely War by Julie Berry. This, I've talked about this relatively recently. It's actually in the same vlog that I talked about Mary B. And I read it the same week. But this basically is the story of two couples during World War I, but it's told from the perspective of the Greek gods, specifically Aphrodite, who kind of like meddled in their affairs. Um, so it's her and Ares, the god of war, and Apollo, the god of like everything, <laughs> um, Hades, the god of death, and then Aphrodite's husband, Hephaestus. Um, and so it's them kind of like telling the story to Hephaestus of these two couples, and through it they're kind of like explaining a couple of things to him. And I thought I was gonna like this. I'm not a huge fan of stories set during World Wars 1 and 2. Now they're good, I'll definitely give them a try because obviously there are some that I like, but as a rule anything set during war that specifically focuses on like the actual fighting I'm not a fan of. So I was a little wary of that, but I love Greek mythology so I really wanted to give this a shot. And why it's a big surprise to me is not that I enjoyed it, it's how much I enjoyed it because like I really enjoyed this book. When I was done I was happy to give it four stars. It was fantastic. But the farther I would get away from reading it the more I like it. <laughs> it's one of those books that kind of like sticks with you because there's so many layers. I know I've said this a lot before but there are so many layers to the story yet it's not complicated at all. And even if you don't like Greek mythology it's not too heavy-handed in here. It's more of just like they just happen to be the narrators of the story. So it's kind of really fascinating. But you don't have to like Greek mythology for this to like make sense to you. So I think this appeals to a, a wide audience. And it just like sticks with you. Like you keep thinking about it. Or at least I do. So that's why it's a big surprise for me. The next one is your like new favorite debut author. Now that can be a new author to you. Like one you've never read of before. Or it can be a new author as in their debut came out to this year. I'm going to go with a author who's new to me, and I'm going to go with Talia Hibbert. Um, I read both Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and Take a Hint, Danny Brown, this year. I'm planning on reading uh, Act Your Age, Eve Brown, in this month, which is, it's across the room. I didn't even feel like picking it up. But these two I've read in the last, like, few months, and I have become completely enamored and in love with her writing. That means the same thing. I love her so much. Um, she's very British in how she writes. And that's probably why I like it. She's very funny. Her banter is incredible. I think these characters are so much fun and I love them so much. And like I I want to read everything she's written. Like I've only read these two in the series but I, I'm, I want to read everything that she's written because I think she is so good. Um, so she's been writing for a while. She's not a new author. Um, however she's new to me and I love her. So she's definitely like now one of my favorites. The next one is your newest fictional crush. And these are weird for me because like I don't really crush on characters in books. I like them. I think they're adorable, but I don't fall head over heels for them. You know what? I'm changing my answer sitting here. Um, I'm going to go, where's that book? I had a plan and now I'm changing it. I'm going to go with Reese from Akamath. Well, the Akatar series. He, I love him so much. Um, I just talked myself out of everything I just said. So yeah, he he was so much fun. I loved reading about him, especially in this book. I loved seeing his character development in this book and kind of getting to know the real him. I'm late to the party, but he's great. So yeah, I'll say him. The next one is your newest favorite character. And for this one, I'm going to go with a manga character. And that is our main character from A Dreaming Sun, um, Kamiko Shiramana, I think is how you say it. But she... 
is just so much fun. I don't know what is she, like, how to explain her, but she's this super quirky kid, and I just want to love her. Like, I just want to hug her and say that everything's gonna be okay, and it's okay to be awkward, because we're all awkward. And, like, I just, she's fun. She's fun to read about. I've only read the first in this series, but I'm already in love with her, and I cannot wait to see where the series goes. I read this one last month and loved it so much, but, like, she's just fun, you know? She's quirky and fun, and I like her. The next one is a book that made you cry. And while this isn't the most recent one that made me cry, it's the one that made me cry the hardest since like I read Crescent City. And that's Aguilar. This is just gonna become a Sarah J Mass video. Like that's where we're at. But the ending of this broke me and then put me back together and then broke me again. Like it was one of those. And so yeah, I like bald cried, sobbed, cried. I sat in this chair and cried and I was really happy my husband wasn't home yet to see me cry. Not that he would judge me, it's just kind of awkward to like cry about a book when someone else is there, you know? Um, but this for sure, like this one, sobbed like a baby. Next one is a book that made you happy and I'm gonna go with I Speak Boy by Jessica Brody. This is a middle grade book that I read a few months ago. I got the arc of and loved and so I needed to get my own physical copy of it. And this is a middle grade retelling of Emma by Jane Austen, but it's very loosely based. So you don't have to know Austen to love this book or even be interested in this book. But there are like tiny hints like character names and things like that to the original. But this completely stands on its own. And honestly, it was just a lot of fun. I think the idea behind this is fascinating because kind of the whole idea is we follow our main character, M, who is very boy crazy in middle school, which honestly, weren't we all? And then one day she wakes up with this app on her phone that can translate boys. And so like you kind of understand a little bit more about what they're going through, kind of what they're thinking. And it's just really, I like the idea. I think it's fascinating. And this was just fun, pure fun to read. I got transported back to middle school personally. So this was just honestly a whole lot of fun. I loved reading that book so much. The next one is your favorite book to film adaption that you saw this year. And I haven't seen that many to be honest, but I think I'm gonna go with Shadow and Bone, the Netflix series that was out based on the Grishaverse by Lee Bardugo. I'm sure many of you have heard about this and even watched it yourself. I've only read the Six of Crows duology. I haven't read the trilogy, like the Shadow and Bone trilogy that she wrote beforehand, but even with that, like the plot in the show, I think doesn't really, like it's definitely not the Six of Crows plot, but it's got some of the Six of Crows characters. And I loved, I just loved seeing all these characters on screen. I think it was cast incredibly well. It, like these characters felt real. Like I'm watching them and I'm watching Kaz and Anesh and Jasper and like all these people. And I'm like, that, that's who that is. Like that spectacular casting on that, that part. And I just think it was really well done and I'm very excited to have a second season. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. The next one are the kind of videos you've done so far this year that you were the most proud of. And I have a couple. I think my number one that I'm the most most proud of is the beautiful books video that I did uh, because that's kind of where I really started doing the overlay and I kind of started experimenting with some b-roll in some of my videos and I've liked how it turned out. But that one was just so much fun um, and I love showing off some of my beautiful books. It didn't get as much view viewage as I wanted but I'm still really proud of it regardless. And then I'm also really proud of my Akatar vlog just because like it's full spoilery thoughts and I've done a couple of book diaries like that before but they were just kind of okay and I was really proud of how that one turned out. So I'd say those two are my favorite so far. The next one is the most beautiful book that you have bought this year. I have two because I can never choose these things. Um, the first one is this UK edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I personally love this a thousand times more than the US cover. I think the US cover is honestly just a little bit boring. But I just like the gold foiling and like the blueness of it. And then like the end pages are pretty and even like the cover is this really pretty gold. Um, so it's just a beautiful book to be honest. So I'm really really love this one. And then I also really love Alazzo by Darcy Little Badger. This cover is so pretty. We've got some shine there, but honestly, it's the it's the hard cover underneath. It's got these wolves on it as well, I believe. No, it's just on the on the front. But like it's such a pretty book overall. So those I think are my most beautiful that I've bought so far this year. Aren't they pretty? 
And then the very last question are the books that you want to read by the end of the year. Just like the ones that you're like, I have to read these this year. I have three. The first one is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Everybody and their brother has been telling me to read this book. We'll see if I can squeeze it in by the end of this month. I'm not sure. Um, I'll definitely read it in August regardless. But this one, I'm sure many people know what it's about, but it follows a guy named Linus. And he's like a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth. And he goes to this like, I wouldn't call it an orphanage, but like a home maybe where there's some magical kids to go check it out and see how they're doing. Are they actually going to be dangerous? And I believe he starts to fall for the owner or the caretaker or, you know, whatever you want to call the person who's in charge of this house. I've heard it's incredible. I've heard it said that this is basically middle grade for adults. I'm very excited. The next one I want to read is My Contrary Mary by the Lady Janies, which are Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is the first and their second series. They did a Janes series, which I have had and talked about countless times. Um, but they're starting one on Marie's, and so this is their first one. It came out in June, and this one follows Mary Queen of Scots, set in the same world as their first book in the Jane series, which is My Lady Jane. Um, kind of during Tudor England, Elizabethan England a little bit. This one is more France, but it's that time period. Their books always have some kind of fantastical element to them, so we know what that is if you've read My Lady Jane, but I'm excited to jump back in this world, and I love their writing. They're so funny. And then, of course, the last one I need to read is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. Um, there is the tiny novella that I want to read before I get into this one, so I technically need to read that one as well, but I need to know. I need to know. I need to finish. I know a lot of people love this one. This one is actually a lovely gift from my friend Serena um, from A Wandering Mind, and so I'm very excited to get into this one. She says this one's her favorite in the series, and I've heard that from a couple of people, and I need to know why they think that. So, yeah, that's those are the three that I really I'm just like I need to read these in like the last six five to six months of this year. But that's it. That is my mid-year freakout tag. Did you play along? Let me know some of your answers down in the comments. Do you agree with some of my answers? I apologize for going very Sarah J. Mass heavy, but like she's my recent obsession, so sorry, not sorry. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media as well as other fun bookish links down there, so don't forget to check all of those out. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!